I see all the breakfast and plus TV. You just take a look at, you know, the security concerns and all that's been happening shortly after the elections. The fact that it's been a renewed attack in some parts of the country. Now, uh, gunmen suspected to be Boko Haram terrorists attacked Duban community in Hongo, local government area of Adamawa State, killing three and setting ablaze houses and shops, cutting away food items as well. Just yesterday, also, no fewer than 10 persons were murdered in Kiwasit village in Usa Council of Taraba State, where suspected headsmen uh, were responsible for that attack. Now, confirming the development, the council Keteka Committee Chairman Musa said the attackers invaded the community in the early hours of yesterday. The onslaught came barely two days after scores were slaughtered in Garni Bak village in Kolo Council by unknown gunmen. Uh, this has been shock that has been expressed. I mean, it feels like, you know, that's it every other time. Uh, governors or the president would be very shocked by, you know, the renewed attack. Uh, Governor Darius Ishiaku uh, has expressed his shock as well. According to the chairman, he's directed security operatives to go after, you know, the killers. Now, for the want of time, it's also important to note that apart from Taraba State, Adamawa, Kogi is also another hotspot, amongst others that we can mention. But this morning, we have our guest this morning, Edgar, uh, joining us to make sense of all of this, Augustine Edgar, who is a security expert. Augustine, thank you so much for being part of the show. Good morning, it's my pleasure. Yes. I'd like to ask you, what are your thoughts on the recently renewed attacks? Now, prior to the election, we had also noticed that there seemed to have been a break, you know, from all of the attacks from bandit, headsmen, Boko Haram, uh, whatever attacks that you have for them. It, it, it totally, you know, went down. And some people had alluded that it probably would have been, you know, the issue of the uh, redesigned and the cash, cashless policy the narrow note and what have you could have been responsible for the fact that we didn't have these attacks. Now, shortly after the election, uh, we seem to be having these attacks and a lot of Nigerians have lost their lives in the course of this. So I ask you again, wh what do you make of these renewed attacks in our polity? All right, I, I think um, they, don't want to be feel, they don't want to feel defeated. Because uh, from the uh, global terrorism. Well, we seem to have a disconnect. I'd uh, probably like to share your thoughts about the, uh, you know, the attacks that have actually emerged, you know, shortly after the elections in different parts of the country. And, uh, you know, also looking at the fact that there's a curfew that's also been imposed, however, you know, in some local government over the recent killings that we're having. In Nigeria, not necessarily the entire country, but in some parts. But you can also take out the fact that crime and criminality is also on the high. And not to say that we want to wake up to a country where, of course, that would be the wish of everyone, where crime and criminality is, does not exist. But then we, we don't, I mean, perfection is an illusion. But then again, uh, we, we're asking what could have been responsible for the period of quiet and calm that we had experienced prior to the elections. Edgar, can you hear me? I think there were there are two things that were responsible for uh, for the, the inactivity of those groups. First, before the elections, there were a lot of uh, redeployment of security forces in all areas, in all the communities. On our streets, they were there. <laughs> Uh, that was an increased surveillance on their own part that they couldn't. Uh, also, there was this cash crunch during that period. People didn't have enough cash to move around. And also, there was this stop and search going on. And so at that time, I think uh, they were on a very low key. But uh, after the elections, we see that some of those things have been lifted up. Uh, the police have returned to their various uh, duty posts and duty stations. Uh, we still have uh, a few inflow of cash in the system so they can uh, they, they have money to really go around totally 
In the global index of uh, most terrorized nations, we saw that Nigeria has moved from the fourth position to the eighth position, or six to eight, from the analysis that we got globally. And the, they don't want to feel defeated, uh, as much as we also know that some of their, uh, their hierarchy have been, uh, have been dismantled to some extent. Now uh, they are operating in some certain, uh, certain factions, uh, little factions that have been broken or spread across throughout the region, as you can see. They don't have a centralized formation like before. And some of them, of course, they know that they need funding uh, to carry out their operations and even to survive. And we see that funding too have been made difficult by the government. So like I said in the last program, they go through, they try to make their own funding by inflicting some of this uh, violence in the community, uh, creating fear and panic. Take what they can take. First for their own survival, take, uh, they were just after, in one of the, the houses they broke in, they took food. So, And you can see that it is a, a matter of survival now. They are, they are, they are there uh, to survive, mostly before they can have a fit. You know that it's a situation of survival on their factions. And so they are operating indiscriminately. Uh, that is responsible. Uh, that doesn't mean that the Nigerian, uh, uh, Nigerian, Nigerian military force is not making progress. They have made frantic efforts. They have made a very good progress so far. And uh, we think that within those regions uh, where they have this violence, like every state government should reinforce their security and to protect lives and property. Well, so um, would you agree with uh, the redesign, I mean, the policy of the Central Bank of Nigeria, uh, where you have the now redesign and the fact that, you know, some of the reasons for this policy had been uh, leaved. For instance, uh, one of the reasons for that policy is to reduce the unbanked population. I can't categorically say that the unbanked mm. population has reduced, or you rather have a lot of people who are going to be unbanked following the aftermath of you know that pol particular policy. But then again, uh, tackling security was one of it. So do you think that um, that particular policy has had a serious effect on, you know, the attacks of this criminal element. And then maybe what we're seeing now is more like, you know, the aftermath of it. Yes, of course. In, in a way to tackle uh, insecurity is, uh, is a 360 degree approach. And of course, we know that funding plays a very key role in, in funding uh, all these terror attacks. And of course, in most terror uh, attack on most criminal war, the banks play a lot, of, uh, a lot of role to enable their operations. And so it was a very, very wonderful one from the government initiating some of this cashless uh, uh, policy from the central bank to try to make things uh, a little bit difficult for the society. And of course, for those who depend on uh, some of these uh, infrastructure to commit crime. I, I would not say that uh, it, 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 would, it, it, it has helped to some extent, but then the central bank have to find a way. The criminal elements will not stop. There's no way criminality can be stopped. It can only be reduced. So us returning back, the nation returning back to the normal uh, operations, like uh, having the cash flow, is definitely not going to increase uh, insecurity, but as they have their policies uh, uh, well instituted, like the minimum balance, the minimum withdrawal per day, of course, those checks really help us to keep uh, in check of insecurity in our nation. But, but I'd like to ask you then, what then is responsible for these renewed attacks? I mean, it wasn't what we saw shortly after that policy was introduced. And if you have alluded to the fact that, you know, the economy was crippled, then exactly what is responsible for these renewed attacks? Well, um, I was hoping that Edgar would actually respond to, you know, what are the concerns? I mean, what could be responsible for the renewed attacks? 
I mean, prior to the, re the introduction of the CBN policy, where Nigerians or Nigeria's economy was suspected to go cashless. Edgar, if you can hear me now, my, my question to you is what then is responsible for the renewed attack by these uh, bandits? Some people say headsmen, others would say Boko Haram. But however you look at this, this uh, you know, persons who have, uh, who have become a threat to uh, national security. So exactly what then is responsible for the renewed attack when we look at months back, this was not the case. First of all, is a survivor. These groups want to survive. That is first thing, survivor. Secondly, they are trying to, to get funding for their operations. And so, Ed, can you hear me? Well, well so may, maybe we'll probably have to have this conversation tomorrow, okay? Uh, we, we need to hear your thoughts, and we'll probably just have orders on board. We would have to move this conversation to tomorrow. It's unfortunate that the network has been very unfriendly with us this morning on the show. Uh, we apologize sincerely on behalf of the service providers and what have you. And we hope that we have this conversation, uh, conversation tomorrow. Edgar, thank you so much for being part of the show this morning. He's a security expert and analyst. He joined us this morning from Ibadan. We take a break. When we return, we'll be looking at another conversation. Hopefully, the network is favorable. Uh, cash withdrawal limits, especially the fact that, you know, governors have been urged to embrace digital transfers. What exactly could be the problem with that? Stay with us.